Hey guys, uh, in today's video I want to explain how I use GDB with Valgrind um, and Tmux, if you guys don't know what Tmux is. I'm going to explain, I'm going to first, I'm going to go through some sample C code um, and then I'll show you how I debug it and look for memory leaks uh, using GDB and Valgrind. Um, I'm going to do it all from the terminal, so I'm not going to use any extra tools. Um, cool, alright, so... First, let's look at the um, the code that I put together. I put together some sample code. Um, so, let's see, I wonder if I can make this a little bigger. Let's vim into test.c. And so, uh, what I have here is uh, just a really quick program I threw together. Um, this is basically, uh, let's see if I zoom out. Yeah, that's easier. Okay, so I'll start with the main. Uh, the main is very simple. We just we declare a uh, a char pointer, um, and then we declare a number. Um, we set the number to a hundred, and this number is going to be given to our function. The function is really just going to act like b zero. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with what the b zero function is in um, in the standard library, essentially what it is is it is like malloc. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, b zero. What it does is it uh, it takes a memory address and then it takes a number and it sets everything to zero. So it initializes your uh, allocated memory uh, space. Um, and then what uh, C alloc does, uh, there's malloc and C alloc. <clears throat> what C alloc does is it runs malloc, but then it you know, runs B0 right after um, to initialize your memory. That way you don't have just random values in your memory addresses. So what this function 1 does is it. Uh, it basically does what C alloc. So it's going to malloc your memory address. We're giving it a number uh, right here. Uh, this isn't exactly like C alloc because C alloc takes two arguments. It takes your number of elements and your element size and it multiplies them. This is just a really quick example function. Um, so it's just going to take a number. It's just going to allocate n number of bytes, uh, size of char. Size of char is one, so we're going to allocate n bytes. Um, we guard the malloc, and then we are going to say while i is less than n, uh, we are going to set the index of uh, the allocated memory of i. We're going to set that equal to zero, and then we're going to increment i and just iterate over the whole memory space, uh, and then return uh, the pointer to the beginning of the memory space. Now, uh, I intentionally left something out because what this function does is it it mallocs for uh, a certain number of bytes, basically, uh, and then it initializes it, and then it returns an address. It does not free, and then down here in my main, I'm also not freeing. So, the point of this code is to show whenever you might have a memory leak, because we're going to malloc in another function, we return the pointer, and then we forget to uh, free it. And so, if I um, if I go back and let's compile this source code, so we're going to say gcc test.c, um, we're going to do our output as just test, uh, and we compiled, and then we're going to run valgrind, and to run valgrind you just do the command valgrind uh, dot slash test, and so that's going to give us a little memory report, and you can see here it says definitely lost 100 bytes, and that makes sense, because if we cat the, the test, our number was set to 100, so we asked malloc for 100 bytes and then we just never freed it right so um there's that now let's say we it, we had a much more complex uh, uh program and we didn't know where our memory leak was and we wanted to find it um this tutorial is about how to f how to use gdb and valgrind to step through your um your program to find where the memory leaks are um, so the first step that I always go through is to activate a program called tmux. Uh, tmux is kind of like a terminal emulator inside of a terminal. And it lets you do something cool um, like, like this, where you can set up two terminals right next to each other. Um, to do this on uh, with the default settings, I believe it's Control-B and then the double parenthesis. So you have to hit shift parenthesis. Uh, I'm sorry, not parenthesis, uh, shift uh, quotation. So it's control B qu double quotation. Um, and you should be able to set up just like this. Whoops. Uh, control B. There you go. That does it vertically. If you want to do it horizontally, 
I believe it's control B and then uh, percent sign. And if you want to exit these, you just type exit and it'll close out. So to use Valgrind and GDB together, first I'm going to do, uh, the command is Valgrind. Um, and I like to do them in two terminals because Valgrind is going to open up um, and it's not going to close. And you're going to hook your uh, GDB to it and then run through your code. And then Valgrind will show you any memory errors in real time as you're stepping through your code. Um, so what I'm going to do is Valgrind, and then we have a special uh, flag here. We're going to do VGDB error equals zero. Um, and then I believe after that is the name of your executable. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so it just says uh, it's starting up. Action at startup, VDB something, dot, dot, dot. Um, and then it gives us this command here. It says, uh, give GDB the following command, target remote pipe user bin v, uh, VGDB, and then uh, process ID, and then this is the process ID. So what we're gonna do is pop over to this side. Um, if you want to switch windows, I believe it's on the default controls, it's control B and then an arrow key, and you can switch from which terminal you wanna use. Um, so we're gonna do GDB, and then uh, our test, okay? Um, and normally your source won't pop up right away, but if you want to, you can enter this layout source, that command, and that'll pop up a little box like this so that you can, uh, uh, you can see your source code as you're stepping through it. So um, we're gonna hit start. It's gonna say it doesn't, oh, you know what? We forgot to, all right, just a second. We forgot to compile with the G flag, which is necessary. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I just basically stopped uh, Valgrind on the side there. Um, sometimes to stop it is a little difficult. You have to press your control B and then X and in the bottom left it says kill pain and you say yes. Um, and that's because for some reason the control C or control D doesn't kill Valgrind. So it's a little irritating, but that's the way I figured out how to get around it. So anyway, let's start up Valgrind again. Um, and then we'll come over here, and now that we have our G flag, we can uh, do GDB uh, test. And then we're going to say start. Um, okay, and then we're in the beginning. And now we're going to enter this command that's over here that says target uh, remote pipe user bin v GDB uh, dash dash process ID equals 28022. So you enter that, and let's see. I believe that's good. So let's say, let's break at main, and then we'll say run. Oh, sorry, we have to say C for continue. And there you go. <clears throat> now we've entered in here, and if we look on the right, nothing has changed in our Valgrind window, which is good. So I'm going to press next, and then we're going to step with S into function 1. Great. And now we're going to uh, just step through this. Um, this should be pretty straightforward. This is going to iterate 100 times, so I'm actually going to just say uh, I'm going to break at 18, which means line 18, break it, set a breakpoint at line 18, and then C. Let me just jump to them so I don't have to iterate over this loop 100 times. So we're going to return the pointer. Um, and now at this point, I believe the, once I press, because we're going to return zero to the operating system, once I press N, we're going to see an output on the Valgrind window. Um, and it's going to tell us right there that we lost, um, that we lost memory. So this is fairly simple uh, to set up. It's a little irritating to have to type in target, remote, pipe, all that stuff. Uh, right every time you run through GDB um, but using this you can use GDB and Valgrind together uh, which is very useful um, especially whenever you have like a uh, a memory leak where you don't know where it is um, maybe in a, in a if anyone has any questions in another video I can set up a little bit more uh, complex code this is really easy because it just kind of showed a single malloc and um, and you just kind of step through it um, you could probably, you could definitely do this without <laughs> GDB and Valgrind, but let's say you had a program that had like 
20 source files and I don't know 10 or 15 different malloc's in different places and you had a library uh, it can get complex quickly if you're really uh, trying to build more complex code um, so this can be super useful if you uh, don't know where your uh, memory leaks are so okay that's all for now uh, thanks for watching I hope this was helpful and if you have any questions just uh, send me a comment and I'll I'll try to answer anything okay bye